promoting stars. Okay. Hey, it's Tina Swanger. I am here at Family Flavors, the slide at the World Broadcasting Network, WBN. I'm getting ready to start my show. Uh, it's supposed to be from two to three. Uh, the subject is Rags to Resilience. And I was trying to think of a great topic today. Uh, last week was more about who I am and what I'm about. Uh, Sage actually was a wonderful partner where we bounced ideas off of each other and questions and kind of um, giving you a little background and history about who I am. And I was talking to my husband, James. Uh, he is an amazing man. He uh, was plain white bread and I was a wild child. Um, I have been sober for coming up on 32 years and uh, he's been with me for 25. So he did not see uh, the worst of me. Luckily, he saw me after I was well into my sobriety. Um, but he said a couple of things when I was talking to him uh, in the beginning and that uh, made me hang in there. And it was because of my husband that I am still sober today uh, I believe, uh, as well as um, the weak connection I was able to maintain with my higher power. Um, I'm going to ask my husband a couple questions about what it was like dealing with a recovering addict uh, that has to do with our family, our um, kids, our, you know, what we do for fun. Uh, how we've overcome some of the communication challenges and you know there's a lot of things that happen in marriage that is a journey uh, there is no perfect marriage there is no um, you know one way to communicate everybody has their own triggers everybody has their own emotional hang-ups their different come-froms different experiences in life and it is a flat out miracle when people actually stay together and people actually go the distance and go through some of the hardest times, death, um, you know, uh, mistrust. Uh, you find different ways of communicating when it comes to kids, finances, sex, uh, you know, what we're going to talk about doesn't fit most people, uh, but it's definitely a conversation. We are going to talk about what worked for us, what went bad, uh, what could have taken us completely down. I mean, there were many times where we were going to let it go, let our, our marriage go, and even as much as we invested into the property, or into property, <laughs> you tell I'm a real estate agent, invested into our marriage. Uh, I would, I'm so lucky to be married to my husband, James. Actually, it'll be our 24th anniversary coming up March 21st. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, the 16th, we, we act, was actually when we met uh, 26 years ago. So. Uh, my husband James will be here very shortly. Uh, he doesn't know what we're going to talk about. We did not pre-record anything. Um, so I'm getting ready to go live on WBN, and this is my Facebook Live, so let's hit it. This is my bump song. I love it. Crank it, sister. <laughs> Just so you know, the reason why that bump song was so important, Sweet Child of Mine, Guns N' Roses, um, when I got sober, uh, I went to a lot of therapy and dug deep into 
what caused me to be an addict. A uh, sweet child of mine was me and my connection to my inner child. And it is so appropriate to be my bump song, my intro song for uh, my show, Rags to Resilience. It is, uh, means a lot to me, and now you kind of understand why I play it. It's not because I'm a major Guns N' Roses fan, although I am a bit of an 80s hairband fan. Uh, <laughs> but that's another story. That was part of the uh, wild and crazy. I don't regret it because uh, I had to go through everything I went through to get here. Nothing happens to me, it ha or for me. No, nothing happens to me, it happens for me. Um, and that goes for all of us. Uh, we are actually writing the book of our life. Our life is written by us. And if you believe in your higher power in, in conjunction with that, which I do. Um, I'm always looking for my, pers for my purpose, for discernment on, on what's right uh, or what I believe to be right. Um, there's a lot of judgment out there. You can judge away. I am resilient. Uh, what my truth is, is my truth. I just want to share it with you. Because I believe that when people get vulnerable and genuine and they care about other human beings uh, not suffering and not uh, going through a lot of hell, you know, a lot of people get so depressed and uh, angry and they feel like a victim. I can promise you that is not what you have to do. You do not have to be a victim. You can choose. Uh, you know, a lot of bad things happen, and I would never minif minimize any of it. A lot of bad things happen to me. I don't minimize any of it. What I do is I honor it. I bring in some gratitude that I'm still here. I still have the opportunity to help my children, to be a better wife and mother and boss and friend. That's what I do. I, I consciously think about what lessons I've learned from all the challenges that I've had so that I can be a better person. And I've been doing that. Uh, I'm not perfect. I screw up a lot. Uh, I'm always learning. I didn't have role models growing up, so I kind of had to flutter away uh, my life, uh, you know, learning lessons along the way making sure that uh, I was doing the best I could. Uh, and then when I wasn't doing the best I could, I gave myself grace. I gave myself permission to fail. I gave myself permission to be judged. I gave myself permission to face my fear and genuinely uh, open up. I believe that opening up gives other people permission to realize their greatness, to give other people permission to reach out to others that are hurting, and other people permission to share their story. Because, you know, we're not just bumbling around saving our own lives. We've got, we've got a job. We've got a job to do. There's a lot of other hurting people out there that could benefit from the challenges that we've faced. And I'm here to tell you, I want to help other people. I want to speak life into other people that are struggling. Whether it's a woman entrepreneur, whether it's a mother uh, that is facing addiction with their children, whether it is somebody newly sober who, who thinks that their life is over and that they uh, can't go on. Um, you know, one of the things I did newly sober was I was on the suicide hotline. And, you know, several years later, I was in a 7-Eleven and this woman goes, oh my God, you saved my life. I didn't recognize her, didn't even recognize her. She looked totally different than when I picked her up, all skinny and gaunt and 
teeth all messed up and just begging for somebody to believe in her. And uh, I broke down and cried and that was probably about seven years ago. And I thought, gosh, you know, if I can make that kind of a difference, then I've got something that I need to share. And um, I, I kind of found my purpose. I am a really good real estate agent. I am. I, I love doing it. I've been doing it since I've been sober because I knew that the life I was leading before, I had to close that chapter, working in the bars and, and uh, doing all of that. I, I had to get away from that because uh, that was surrounded by alcohol and drugs and <laughs> Lord knows I did not need that. Um, oh, I got one point. So if I'm out and I tell you I'm an alcoholic or a drug addict and you want to have a glass of alcohol, don't worry, I'm okay. Most recovering alcoholics are, are very solid in their sobriety if they've had any time of sobriety. Uh, and don't feel like we're judging you. We're not. We're, we have accepted the fact that we can't drink. But we also know that there are people out there who can, with no problem whatsoever. I encourage anybody out there who has a friend in, in recovery, uh, in any kind of recovery, that don't, don't take it personally. Um, just love us and support us. And know that, uh, you know, we're struggling, but we're not judging. I mean, I, I don't judge. I don't, um, I don't want you to feel bad. I don't want you to stop hanging around me because you're uncomfortable. I thought that when I quit drinking and doing drugs, I was never ever gonna have fun again, ever. But contrary to that, when I got sober, it took me a little while to go back to a dance club uh, because I love to dance. Oh my goodness, if you've ever seen me at a party and the music comes on and the dance floor is out there, I'm dancing like nobody's watching. I went into a nightclub the first time, completely sober, and had a, a Diet Coke, and the music came on, and it was so much more glorious than it had ever been before. And it was at that point where I went, yeah, I can do this. I am in recovery. I am sober and I love it because the next day I remembered how much fun I had. I remembered all of the wonderful people I was surrounded with. I remembered why I didn't drink anymore because there were other people there. So uh, let's see. Oh, my husband's here. I am going to get Sage to go down and open the door so we can talk to my husband. This is going to be really exciting. He doesn't know what questions I'm going to ask. Can you go get him? Yes, I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, huh? I have no idea. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, this is just another testament to how wonderful and amazing my husband is. I'll tell you a little story. When I went to an elite mastermind program, uh, Jeremy Anderson, Next Level Living, I'm going to just bring it on out there. Um, he uh, is amazing. Uh, I, I fully believe he's anointed, went to uh, Atlanta, Georgia. But we were talking about what brought you here. Well, one of the things, my husband and I went on a retreat about six years ago, and I bought him... I think it was for his birthday or something. Anyway, I bought him a journal because we were talking about journaling. And his first and only entry in this journal was, I love my wife. I support her. We reconnected on a level deeper than we've ever connected. This was 2015. And the entry said, I love my wife. I think she should be a speaker, and I think she has a gift. And um, 
when I decided to join the training program and the speaking program, and I asked if he would support me, he brought the journal out and he took a picture of it and sent it to me when I was in Atlanta. And it said, May 2015, I love my wife. I support her. I think she should be a speaker. And uh, that changed my life. And I had no question about what direction I wanted to go and where I wanted to be and who I wanted to be with to take me through that journey. Now, this is not an easy road. What I'm doing here is fumbling around trying to find my voice. I am perfecting what my mission is, what my message is, what my gift is, because I don't know. It's a journey. Um, and if I don't like the chapter I'm writing right now, I will turn the page and start a new chapter. But if I start feeling like I'm in the right place at the right time, like I do now, I'm just going to keep going. I am scared. Uh, I'm vulnerable. I will get feedback. I don't know if um, anybody's going to listen. But if you do, and you approve of this message, please let me know. Let me know if I'm on the right track. Let me know if you have any constructive criticism. And if you want to talk smack or, or be mean, please don't. Please don't. I've beat myself up enough. I really have. I beat myself up to where I wanted to commit suicide. Where I had no self-worth, no self-respect. As a matter of fact, the relationships that I brought into my life were a direct result did you know you teach people how to treat you without even knowing it? If people are treating you poorly, if they are disrespecting you, if they are talking poorly to you or about you, it's because we taught them to do that. We shouldn't take it personally. It's either that or else they are, are not well and they need to work on themselves, but it's still not our, our responsibility. I like the saying, uh, not my circus, not my monkeys. So my children are my circles and my monkeys, so I take my children on, <laughs> and I love them so much, but I'm their mom. But anybody other than that, besides my husband, it's not my circus, not my monkeys. Everybody's got their own journey, and um, Hopefully my husband will be coming up soon and you'll get to see him. His name's James. He's a couple years older than me. Oh, here's a fun story. Uh, oh, I don't want to tell all these stories because I want to get his response. Uh, he, I actually met him at an open house. I was single with three kids, three sons, and um, I knew I had a lot of love to give and a lot of love to offer. I was financially stable. I had a, a, my own home and I had a decent car and a great job, but I wanted to have a relationship with someone who would uh, be my partner and love me back. And, and James, actually, I saw him in an open house. He came in while I was trying to sell a property and he didn't realize it, but uh, I was very attracted to him right off the bat. And hey, Hi. oh my goodness. And now entering the room at Family Flavors the Slide World Broadcasting Network. This is Dun 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 James Swanger. Hey, ah. hey baby. <laughs> How was that? Phenomenal. Was that a good entry? That was the best. Oh, you know what? We didn't have What's that? a good bump song for you. Oh, I have a bump song. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> okay, I don't know what to come up with for that. That's a that's a good question. <laughs> well, you got to think of one. Mine, oh, mine is Sweet so. Child of Mine. I'm thinking but Wild Thing. Like you Wild, wild Thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. We need a little gorilla. Okay, so I want you to scoot just a little bit this way. Right. There you go. 
All right. Because <clears throat> you can see we are Facebook Live right now. Oh, awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I love you. Me too. Thank you so much for coming. I was just explaining to everybody that I, um, I'm really blessed to have met you. I just got to the part where uh, I was doing an open house, and there you were. You walked in. <laughs> Let me tell you a secret. He had a real estate agent. And you know, in my profession, we are not allowed to go behind the sign. In other words, if a real estate agent has a relationship with a client, we are not supposed to talk to them. Well, the only one I ever did, swear, was this man. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Nope, he got the bonus package. He <laughs> got the bonus package. <laughs> So, um, this is the first time James has ever been here. Uh, this is my second recording, actually third time, because I was in uh, the Femme Fatale group by surprise. I, I just came in to say, hey, what's this all about? And next thing you know, I'm sitting in the chair talking to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> right? So I, I'm kind of not shy. I don't know if you knew that or not, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure where to go with that. <laughs> well, I don't know. I guess you I, could say that. I'm quite reserved, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So, um, I guess I guess where I wanted to go with this, uh, you know, I was telling, telling the audience that uh, dealing with somebody who is an alcoholic, who has a lot of baggage, who is... Um, you know, maybe had some trauma. Uh, you know, sometimes acts and reacts in ways that aren't necessarily <coughs> rational or appropriate for the response uh, in normal situations. What, how, how do you deal with that? Uh, I think everybody has some, some level of trauma in their lives. And it's not always alcohol. It can be any number of, of things. Uh, we're a result of, uh, of the world around us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have buttons, and we have baggage, and we have, have issues. And uh, just to have somebody in your life who's willing to be kind and patient and understanding is, uh, is a blessing. Is a blessing. You know... We've been married for going on... 10,000 years. 10,000 years. <laughs> this, this is not a comedy <laughs> show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You're funny. <laughs> that's part of it. That's why I love you. What was that? Don't, don't you get all emotional on um, me. You don't even. Don't even. He's kind of squishy. I'm just I, saying. Yeah, I'm probably the squishier of the two of us. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, where where was I going with that? Who knows? I, I don't know. Uh, it, it was all in there, but I just looked into your eyes, and then I was just all, huh. That's what it was. You're right. <laughs> so, so early on in our relationship, um, I tried to sabotage us in a big way. You want to tell the audience about that? Well. <laughs> no, go ahead. No, okay, I'm being vulnerable. Do you know what this means? I'm, I'm, I'm showing my. This is what we do. I, I, I don't remember what, why you. Uh, I know we were at Walmart and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, something I, I said was a, a trigger, but I don't remember what it was exactly. You may have a better, a clearer understanding of what that was. Oh yeah, why I went ballistic and batshit crazy. A little bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, so uh, <laughs> I felt like I had to make a choice at that point whether to um, uh, continue. We were very, very, very new in the relationship. Yeah, probably I mean, less than a month. Yeah, it was like brand new. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I wasn't sure if, if that's something I should continue to pursue or or maybe the better choice would be to let go Walk of away. this. Yeah. This woman is crazy. But I, I saw a... a, a a genuine um, person inside. I mean, you were really willing to put your uh, 
the emotions out there. I mean, sure, it was a little bit of an awkward situation, but at least it wasn't fake. You, you know, it was real, and you were a real person, and you had, uh, you were really willing to put yourself out there regardless. Mm -hmm. And uh, in spite of the fact I, I thought that was a little crazy at the moment, um, I, I felt like I recognized that at, at the time. Okay, so let me tell you what happened. You have to tell me as I remember. My, <laughs> my side of the story, everything was rainbows and butterflies and unicorns. Actually, I had three sons, single mom. He had two sons, single dad. So when I met him at the open house, we went to, uh, I told him that, you know, I wanted to uh, help him find a house. In spite of my ethical consideration of my profession, I was attracted to him. So that was, you know, that trumped it. So it, it <laughs> we were all cured of other realtors. So. Right. Yeah. He would. He. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Her. His uh, realtor was a guy, and uh, we met him a couple years later, and and uh, said, "Gosh, I'm sorry for stealing your client." And he goes, "Dude, I would have done it." <laughs> so. So we nice we made awesome. amends. Awesome yeah, he's a great guy, um, Paul Howard. If you're listening, you're amazing. Yeah, but, like Paul. yeah. Um, but the bottom line was, I uh, was a single mom, and I was a survivor um, of a lot of trauma. I also uh, was. Um, I had to be strong. I had to be the mom and dad for my three kids. I was the only, uh, you know, person that actually, uh, for me, I had to put the armor on. I had, I had to be tough. I had to be really, really strong. So what I did was everything that was around me, I had to secure and lock down. Finances, um, uh, protection, I had to be the mama bear. Uh, I didn't want anybody, uh, you know, infringing on that because if they infringed or, or impeded on the structure, the bubble that I created, then all of the walls would come tumbling down. I was relatively new in my sobriety and I wanted to keep it that way. Uh, I, I wanted uh, somebody in my life, a partner or whatever, but I didn't want anybody impinging on who I was and who I was creating. So we, the reason I went ballistic batshit crazy is because early on in our relationship, we were talking about stocks and finances. And um, I, I don't trust people because, uh, you know, if, if it is to be, it's up to me. And when I'm protecting my children, you know, anybody who wants to take part of that away from me uh, at the time. So I thought I wasn't willing to give up any control. Okay, I was a control freak. Was. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that? Was. <laughs> so anyway, he was, he was mad. He was like, well, we should join our finances. No, we weren't married yet. And he was like, well, my idea of, and when I was. Get, when we get married. When we if, get. If we were to stay together. So right. To consider. Yeah, so we got serious pretty quick, but understand, you know, we had already been married before. We had already been down the marriage divorce road, uh, and both of us were, you know, relatively uh, cautious because of what we'd been through. In, in spite of the fact we'd only been going out for a pretty short time, we had really, I don't know, we, we clicked really quickly. And yeah. We really fell into those those deep meaningful conversations very quickly yeah um, yeah we were both kind of okay bearing our soul a little bit and i'm not quite sure how that conversation came to be or why yeah <laughs> it, it uh but i do remember feeling really really comfortable with being able to share that with you i think we <clears throat> both came to the realization uh and and let's be honest when i was married uh, I had this knight in, you know, white knight, shining armor, uh, come rescue Tina and right away in the sunset, just like, you know, all the movies and Disney and all that. 
And then when it didn't happen that way, I felt um, destroyed. Uh, you know, what I saw in my parents as role models um, was not reality for what I believed it should look like. Brady Bunch, uh, you know, and we, uh, we created the Brady Bunch. Kind of did. Yeah. Yeah, we did. I And I'm so grateful that we did. But when we were um, new in our relationship, uh, you know, both of us had a little bit of baggage. But we also knew what lessons, again, nothing happens to us. It happens for us. And when you go through a trauma, which is why I've been able to stay sober, and this is good advice for anybody trying to get sober, Take a look. If you live in victim, you're always going to go back and drink or do drugs or continue the behavior or patterns that you were doing that got you there in the first place. If you're a victim, you have no power or control. See, my problem is when I got sober, I took on too much power and control and did not want to share. And oh, what? Why? <laughs> he he still. The, We're going to talk after this. No, just kidding. <laughs> the victim is a very toxic place to be. Yeah, victim is a very, very toxic you place. You could have an entire conversation, a conversation just on the victim. Right. It's it's a horrible place to be. Yeah, it is. It really is. Uh, it's not empowering at all. <clears throat> no, and not only that, when you're with somebody in a relationship, when you come from victim, you know, especially women, and I'm sure a lot of us can relate, um, and I, I'm not, you know, over simplifying. It, it, it really is what it is. As a, as a woman, and, and many of my friends tell me the same thing, we want to be able to vent or discuss or dump or explain, you know, how we feel. And whoever's with us, our partner, our husband, our spouse, whatever, they usually try to fix things, and that's not what we want. You know? Fixers. Guys are fixers. Guys are fixers. And sometimes we just have to um, either let them, which I'm not very good at. Or I need to show up and listen. Or, <laughs> or yeah, we work which that out. But one of the things about getting back to um, early on in our relationship, because we had been where we were, we did learn the lessons that we did. We were able to say, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. If you're okay with that or not okay with that, well, let's talk about it now. Is it something I can live with or is it something I can't live with? Like uh, when I went ballistic and, oh, you're trying to impinge or take away my security or whatever. And, you know, whether you have something to bring to the table or not, I'm not willing to let that protective bubble go yet. And it took a while and I was ready to sabotage everything. I was like, that's it. And something inside me snapped and I couldn't explain it. I mean, I literally was hysterical. I ran across the Walmart parking lot and he was driving after me going, stop, stop, please talk. And I couldn't talk. I couldn't explain why I was feeling the way I was feeling because it was so um, toxic. It was so, I couldn't even explain it. There are sometimes triggers that happen they, they just put you on autopilot and you just take off. What are you smiling about? <laughs> <laughs> no, like, no, that's, it's, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. yeah. Well, so here's the thing. I didn't so, understand why you were so upset. I, I... No, of course you didn't. You weren't in my head. I, it, you know, I look back <laughs> on it right now. You're like, thank no, God. That's a good place not to be. Yeah. Right? Not then anyway. <laughs> But what, what made me absolutely understand that he really did love me, even at that early age, it, that early in our relationship, was that you, um, you looked at me deeper and, and you just put your arms around me and said, it's going to be okay. Oh my God, I melted like a friggin' soup. You know, it was beautiful. Love was patient, beautiful. love is kind. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you got some sauce. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got past that. Uh, we've been through a few roller coasters, um, and a lot of them similar. That was the big one. Uh, and then, you know, I had heart surgery, and he was there. 
and and what else? You you rattled off a bunch of things, and that's when I said, "Oh my God, you got to be on my show." <laughs> I believe I said that um, when you had your heart surgery, um, I was there. Mm -hmm. um, when your brother passed, mm -hmm. uh, that was a pretty crushing time, mm -hmm. and uh, he was someone who lived for a year. Was absolutely sure that you'd be there. Uh, it, it, funny thing that um, if even if we're in the midst of a um, heated discussion, I'll say, <laughs> which we don't sparring see, match, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> if if I ever get that feeling like you need me or you're being vulnerable, it it triggers something in me that I immediately stop. And um, most recently, uh, this October, you had a, uh, a near-death experience, and uh, I mean, I was there for that. You were pretty much in my arms, and I almost lost you, and uh, that was really life-changing, not only for you, obviously, <laughs> but it was life-changing for me too. Um, somehow all those little things that we would um, spar about mm -hmm. just don't seem as important anymore. They just don't seem as important anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it really was a paradigm shift for me to um, remember it, even if we are sparring you still love me, and you still need me, and I still love you for you. So, uh, yeah, I just don't feel the need to, to spar anymore, really. No. <clears throat> no, I still want to spar, though. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I'm, you know, I'm a little spicy. A little, little feisty, yeah. <laughs> a little, little feisty. Because, uh, you know, I think that keeps us on our toes. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Uh, you know, one of the things there, there were times when I, uh, get triggered and I start spiraling in thoughts in my head and that's the mind chatter that says, you know, when you're in a relationship, as long as we've been in, they go, they go, uh, the mind chatter says, you know, you should be farther along. You should, um, you know this this life is boring and mundane or or you know what's next uh is this all there is is this something that um you know we're we're going down different paths or we don't agree or whatever and and the reality is uh taking a look at really what's important and i i had to have one of those reality checks because, you know, sometimes I get all in my head and I start acting selfish and self-centered and it's all about me and what Tina wants and all of this instead of being um, as kind and loving as I know I should be, especially with somebody as wonderful as you. And I mean that. And that's why, you know, having you on the show p partly is to tell him how much I love him. And, you know... It, letting the whole world know shouting it on the rooftops and everybody's listening <laughs> <laughs> i guess so yeah guess so. i'm so glad you're not embarrassed all right. yeah that's awesome it's all good yeah so i know that both of us being together the way we are and uh being able to talk through things even in the hard stuff um it's empowering and it's powerful. So we actually have a gift uh, because we have been married for as long as we have and been through as much as we have and had as many challenges as we've had. Uh, you know, it's truly a blessing. And, and Jamie and I have been working on gratitude um, and really formulating what our dreams are and making sure that we're on the same page. As opposed to victim, uh, gratitude's kind of an opposite. I agree. Uh, be grateful for what you're 
what you have instead of being a, a victim of what you don't. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's all in the perspective and uh, being able to see something from a, well, we do that a lot. What would we call it? Uh, we need a shift. We call it a shift. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the shift. And you don't even look at me when I'm getting all bent out of shape about something and, and you'll just look right dead in my eyes and say, I think it's time to shift. And, and I'll know what you're talking about. And I'll stop and I'll just think about that for a minute. And, yeah. And I usually realize that you're right. Maybe I need to shift where I'm coming from or how I see something or maybe somebody else's point of view that I'm not uh, paying attention to that I should be paying attention to. Oh, either that or else <laughs> I'm not ready to shift yet and I'm going to walk out the door just for a little while and then I'll come back when <laughs> yeah. I'm done huffing and puffing. <laughs> yep. Which is okay too because I used to be afraid that he was going to leave forever. And I know he felt the same way about me. And it's been quite a journey to understand that that's not the case. That just because we disagree doesn't mean our life is over. Just because we disagree doesn't mean that we can't come to compromise or full understanding or... There's a reason why we're together in the first place. You have to remember that when you disagree. Yeah. It, that, that's what is most important mm -hmm. to... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Calmly take a breath and, and think about what you're doing and what you're saying, or, mm -hmm. or what the big picture reader really is. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I will tell you, uh, both of us have had past significant relationships, and our um, lives are so much richer because of our past significant relationships. But what's beautiful about it is is we actually have amazing relationships with our, our, our exes. past, yeah, our exes. I adore um, them. Yeah. Very much. And that, that's the thing, you know, when you're not a victim of the relationship, then you can uh, formulate your own ownership. Uh, you can own <clears throat> where you fell short or where uh, you had areas of improvement or what you can do better with the next relationship. Yeah, I think it's a choice. You, you choose how you're going to react to something. Mm -hmm. And I, I know we've come across that in other books that we've read and experiences we've had, that mm -hmm. there's a difference between wanting to do something and choosing to do something. Mm -hmm. You want to lose weight, but you never will until you choose to do it. Yeah. And it might mean choosing to do the things that it takes to do that, or eating the foods it takes to do that, or exercising when you really don't feel like it. Amen. Choosing and we're doing that right now, by the way. Choosing we're getting to ready to go on a trip. Yeah. And both of us are like, oh, yeah, we got some work on here. <laughs> Different foods. And, and then we're, it's like, it's like even last night, you know, there was some pizza there and, and Jimmy was heading over to get some pizza. And I was like, Mexico. <laughs> uh, um, you're right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and he will do that to me too. He's like, for being my conscience for that moment. Uh, just for that moment. Sometimes we need a little extra willpower for each other that we don't necessarily have at that particular moment in time. It's good we have each other to, yeah. to do that too. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing. I mean, you know, if you're in a situation where, um, Maybe you're single, or you just came off of a bad relationship, um, or or you're still working on a relationship that's not quite right. It does take two. I will tell you, it you cannot unilaterally decide to stay in the marriage or not. It does take two. Period. Both parties, even though you do not this, you do not agree. Sometimes you have to agree to disagree and to compromise, but it is so worth it in the end. I think we're closer now than we've ever been. I agree. Yeah, that, that is an extremely powerful statement uh, given... In spite of some of the chaos that we've faced. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and just so you all know... Uh, it, this is a hard thing to admit and say, and it's really vulnerable. Um, but I have three children by three different people. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking for love in all the wrong places and making really, really bad choices before I got sober. Um, 
I, I, uh, I learned a lot um, through that journey, and, and if I'm going to be completely vulnerable, uh, it, it was because of those children that I actually got sober, because I think I'd probably be dead right now. Um, but, but I also was, in my opinion, divinely guided uh, to him. You want to hear something funny? I'll tell you. So, so our first date was at Chili's. And we were supposed to be talking about real estate because he had a real estate agent. Remember I told you that before? Yeah. I said, uh, hey, James, I've got some houses that you might want to look at. He called me and said, oh, just leave the listings at the front desk. I'll go pick them up. And I said, no, how about I take you to lunch? So he we went to Chili's, sat in one of those booths there. And... Uh, I was on a mission because, you know, I, uh, my pastor told me that I had to be in a relationship for two years before I even thought about being married. I figured I better get going because I'm getting old. I think I was 30, I don't know, 30 something anyway. The clock be ticking. And I got two kids. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But um, I had to really identify what, what, it was I was looking for what I was what kind of person I was supposed to be with and I always liked bad boys I always liked people who um, you know uh, again we teach people how we want to be treated so the people that I had in my life before I taught them to treat me probably less than what I needed to be treated or wanted to be treated or should have been treated um, but I mean, there's a reason for everything, right? So I, I also was told that I needed to have somebody, uh, more stable and that I needed to, to make a list and identify who that was, not just the first person that happened to say, Hey, you're pretty. <laughs> <No. laughs> I was waiting. No, I that's just fun. No. <laughs> So, so our first date was 20 questions and um, he checked all the boxes. Do you know, he has two sons, I have three. They, we have every other one. I have uh, one, then his next, and then next, and next. They truly the, the Brady Bunch, except there was no girls. I was the only girl, but we did have a dog that was a girl, yeah. so that was good. But it was hard to keep the toilet seat down. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am just saying it was really hard in my household to keep that toilet seat down. Somehow I survived. Here we are, 26 years later, and we have separate bathrooms. Yeah, we do now. Yeah. That's why we're still married. Right. We have separate bath and separate closets. Right. Right? <laughs> That's a tip for you young wedding people. Right. Yeah. <laughs> separate bathrooms. <laughs> so I have my oldest son is named Steve, and his oldest is named Steve. I've got an Adam Michael. His son is Stephen Michael. He's got uh, Andrew Edward Arthur, um, and then I have an Adam uh, his uh, son's middle name is also my mother's. Arthur is your mother's maiden name. Is my mother's maiden name. And my father's Arthur. Name. Yeah, and my name. it was crazy. If that wasn't meant to be, I don't know what was. And James. And James. Oh, well, his name is James. And we have a son named James. And we have a son. Well, my brother. I have a brother and a son named James. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. A lot of coincidences. A lot of coincidences. So, I, you know, I look at all that, and that doesn't mean the end-all, be-all, but, man, there sure was a lot of signs. Here's your sign. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, he was a lot less of a bad boy than uh, nah, I was yeah, used right. to. Don't fit that mold very well. No. Mm -hmm. I'm a little squishy for that. Yeah, well, you're a little squishy, and you're also, he was normal. He's not an alcoholic. Oh, my goodness. I it, it well, yeah, and and his father and and mother he was adopted. His his mom and dad were amazing. Uh, I never met his mom, but his dad. She I, passed when I was twelve, thirteen, mm -hmm. thirteen. Yeah. Um, and I was just uh, an only child, me and my father, and that was it. Truth be told, he's a little spoiled. I am completely spoiled. Yeah. 
So, you know, that that's one of our little sparring events. Sometimes we get spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you're so true. <laughs> that's okay. Because I've learned, uh, oh, you know, one of the other cool things about being married mm-hmm. is that uh, we read a lot of the same books. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's ninety nine percent nonfiction, so it's all about being a better human and learning new things and how to relate to each other relationally. Growth. Growth. It's all about growth. And what's cool is you know he'll start a book and he'll be like, oh my gosh, you got to read this and or listen to it. I'm an Audible fan. Yeah, me too. Yeah, and uh, and then we'll talk <clears throat> about it. About the gems that we heard. Because we listen to them separately because him and his car and me, you know, that kind of thing. But set, like uh, the love languages. Woo, that was good. good. Okay. I like that one, five love languages. And, um, you know, most of the books, I think I've got like 120 titles in my Audible. And uh, you've got a very similar amount in yeah. yours, too. Probably the best thing that we could do to learn and grow and continue to develop our relationship is understanding uh, the educational piece, uh, the growth piece, the, hey, this is a new idea. Well, and then also we can, uh, we can be held accountable a little bit more to the fact that a lot of these people... Uh, especially in um, accountability and procrastination and all that, um, they're a lot saying the same thing, and we don't always listen. So, let me see. Oh, look at that. What's okay. That? Well, somebody on uh, Facebook, uh, oh. LB Tao, uh, thank you for sharing this. Yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome, huh? <laughs> um, so, what next? What's next for us? What's our dreams and goals and and all that cool stuff? I'll tell oh, him man. later. No, just kidding. Yeah, right? <laughs> whenever whenever, <clears throat> you know, whenever we uh, uh, have somebody says, hey, do you want to do this or do that? You know, our friends. He's like, I don't know. Talk to my event coordinator. Right. I'm the emotional support husband. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to get him a t-shirt that says that. <laughs> well, I don't know. You've had me on some, some pretty crazy adventures. Like? Like hiking to Machu Picchu. That was a pretty crazy adventure. Mm-hmm. Scuba diving with sharks in Galapagos Island. That was, that was one fun. of your crazy adventures. Um, building parade floats. And, oh, by the way, honey, we're having a party at the house. There's going to be 250 people. Uh, yeah. Can you build a stage? Oh, sure. <laughs> and a shed. And you, you want a disco light? And yeah, and we got plug one. machine and, yeah, and live band and all that. <laughs> So, yeah, it seems like every time I turn around, you've got something that, uh, that I'm getting sucked into. I kind of like I it. know you hate it so much. No, I love it. I love he it. wears the red cape, and it is really, really awesome. You know, I was thinking about what you were saying a minute ago, and a lot of people say that they, they grow apart. And um, I, I don't know. I, I guess that's a matter of perspective again. Mm-hmm. Be- because you feel like you're going two different directions, you might just each be learning something new. And maybe whatever you learn going your direction, you could be sharing with your partner who happens to be learning something else going a different direction. So what and, happens when you're both not on the same page? What if your partner doesn't <coughs> learn what you're learning? That's a really good question. I mean, we're pretty lucky. We we do. We, yeah. We are studious learners. And we we choose to share those things. Mm-hmm. That's a million dollar question. I'm not sure how to answer that. Exactly. I did already before you got here. I did already share with the audience that um, when I was in uh, Next Level Living with um, Jeremy Anderson at the Elite Mastermind Program in Atlanta that I had called you because I was out there by myself. Well, actually, I was there with my son, Adam, and we were both, um, it it was a miracle, actually. My son is amazing, and um, uh, he's actually, uh, my God, he's anointed. I I, I just... You shut off the lines. 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rises show. Lions and Unbreakable Ministries, Prison Ministry. He's also um, in recovery, and he has a powerful, powerful voice. He's a mixed martial arts professional uh, fighter, owns his own concrete company. I mean, a total inspiration to me. Um, you talk about your Anderson on your trip. Oh yeah, Jeremy Anderson. So, you know, one of the things was, I w you know, they're asking us to get involved and I'm not sure, I got a little imposter syndrome. What do I have to offer? Uh, I don't have any degrees. I don't have, you know, I'm too old. I can't relate, you know, all of those things are going through my mind chatter. Um, and, you know, so I, I'm sitting there, I'm doubting whether I even want to get into this program or not of speaking. And, but I also feel a calling. I feel like I have a lot to offer. I feel like maybe somebody needs to hear what, what journey I've been on. And um, so I call my husband um, and it was pretty amazing. I shared that with you earlier. Sorry, I get choked up sometimes. But I shared that earlier, and I wanted you to tell me what that was like getting a call from me asking uh, if we could spend a heck of a lot of wonderful money and commitment <laughs> on on this uh, speaking program. Um, well, I think a new Corvette probably would have been in my future otherwise, but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Being a Corvette guy like I am. Um, I believe in you, and I, I do believe that, that you have a lot to share. And um, I'm not I'm not that worried about about the money. Um, I know that, that, that it's tight, and I know that Connell isn't exactly uh, screaming along at the moment, um, and it affects both our businesses. Mm -hmm. But. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of fear around that. We have uh, always been able to find a way, and we've always had the confidence to to put ourselves out there and, and find a way to to get from where we're at to where we want to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to support you. Tell them about. I want to support you, and I think that was a way of supporting you was was going along with that and figuring it out. What about what you told me? I the journal. Oh yeah, that was what year was that? Two thousand fifteen. Yeah, I think it was. So what happened? I had uh, I had written something in in my journal about you. God, what was it now? You becoming a speaker. That that I saw this in you, and I saw this in our future, and I saw that that someday, um, someday we were going to reach that point where you were uh, going to, to to take what you've learned in your life experiences and find a way to hone that and polish it in a fashion that you could share it with other people and really make a positive impact on other people and. Um, I had written this down in a journal, and I think it was when you got back from your trip. Was no, I was calling you. No, was no. Remember, you took a picture of oh, it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I had found it. <clears throat> so I called you because I'm getting ready to make push the button and make this huge ass commitment, and I'm doubting myself, and and I'm doubting what he's going to say. I'm thinking he's going to say no. It's too much money. We can't do this. I was like cleaning the office or something, and I found the journal. He would that day, that day he was cleaning the office, and came across this journal from 2015, and right before I called him, yeah. and he opened up the that. front page of that journal, and that's what it said. Talk about a sign! Oh my gosh, I get chills every time I think about it. Yeah. And and he started crying when I told him that, and he said, snapped the picture and sent it to me, and I was like, oh my God. I, I, I think you're on the right path, and I think that... Uh, yeah. It That you'll touch someone's life in a meaningful way, and, uh, and that's important. It is important. It is absolutely important. Because 
you know, I want our lives to mean something. And I think that the way we make it mean something is by giving back. The way uh, we share our experience, strength, and hope gives other people the ability to hear it and make their lives better. That's a, an interesting piece of advice, really, is when you get stuck in your head, the first thing that you do is find some way to give back to somebody else. And it kind of gets you unstuck. Yeah, me it does. It absolutely does. When you get stuck, you, you find a way to do something nice for somebody else, and somehow... It, it, it's, it's mostly when I'm feeling selfish and somebody just cut me up. How could they do that to me? Mm -hmm. Or or this deal fell apart and oh my gosh, how could they do that? So blah, blah, blah. Get out of that victim thing. I got to get out of that victim because, you know, shift. yeah, shift. Yeah. That's I have shift. to do that, you know, sometimes multiple times a day. Uh, you know, even after, you know, 32 years, it's still one of those things where you go, Okay, here we go again. It's never gone. It's always a journey. God, it's so hard. It is so hard, but all right, let's do it again. You know, it does get easier though to yeah. shift. Oh, yeah. It, it, it's actually a physical response when you shift. It, you get tense and you go, I, and then you go, okay, all right. I don't want to feel angry and frustrated, and I don't want to punch my husband in the face. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, shift. Tina, you're being irrational and emotional, and this is not real. Yeah. That's what we do. We we actually physically do that. I have done that. Yeah, but, but yeah. Yeah. Then I thought a little Bob Marley, and got a little reggae little going around. Yeah, and I kind of start getting in a groove a little bit, and then I start shifting. I start feeling different. Sometime, yeah. Oh, you want to hear a funny story? This is a funny story. So, <laughs> one of our very first fights, I mean, we were sparring like crazy. Very first fights, new in our relationship. I think we had just gotten married. Angry as all get out. I don't know what I did or why. <laughs> and censor this if you got little kids watching. But uh, I totally got naked. I was so frustrated, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know whether to punch him or walk out the door or cry. So I just got naked and I just stood there. Yeah, I, was I was like, what you got now? So we're shocked by that. So <laughs> I did the same thing. So there's another relationship tip for those who are newly married. If you are in an argument, just get naked. It's really hard to, to argue naked. It's really hard to argue naked. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. do, do you remember that <laughs> fight we had when I was saying, why don't you take out the trash? Yes, I do. I was just thinking what, about that. What happened? Oh, well, uh, I did. I grabbed the trash, and you had grabbed the trash at the same time, and we were fighting over who was going to take out the trash because it was, oh, I ain't going to let you do it now. I'm going to do it. And, and I thought the same way. And Yep, we tore the bag in half, and trash went all over the kitchen. It was funny. We had to laugh at each other. <laughs> we did. We laughed at each other after that. <laughs> We looked at each other like, wow, that was really stupid. I know, I know. <laughs> the dog loved it. He got to, you know, you know <laughs> he was chasing a steak bone or something. So it's really <laughs> funny. We can kid and joke with it. Uh, you know, whenever I'm taking out the trash, he'll look at me and he'll give me a little wink. And it's kind of funny. It's it like. It a joke. Yeah, it's a joke. That's the other thing. You got to learn to laugh at yourself. Oh, that's important. That's really important. So when I catch myself doing something stupid and. Lord knows I do plenty of things that are stupid. I, I'm they, stupid. They, 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 <laughs> is it okay if we let you win that argument? You, <laughs> oh, kidding. you're not supposed to let me win that one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, it's uh, Sometimes I just have, and once again, it's that stop, take a breath thing, and you laugh at yourself for a minute. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, that was just really dumb. Or why am I upset about this? It's, it, is it really going to matter tomorrow? Is it really going to matter in, in five years? Is yeah. really, and that's big picture, you know. I, I know you're upset at me now for whatever, you know, and mm -hmm. or, or vice versa. I'm upset at you for something, and I realize uh, in the big, in the big scheme picture, of things, yeah. I mean, look, 
looking back, we've got 25 years of pretty cool history. <laughs> mm -hmm. We really do. And that uh, was our first date. That was one of the conversations we both had, is that we uh, wanted to make uh, memories. Yeah, make memories. And legacy and history. And, you know, I. so we talked about real estate for about 10 minutes, and we were there for three hours. Yeah, close to it. Yeah. Close to it. Yeah. It Talking about of, everything. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, it, you know, even though it was tough with the, the you know, the relationship and the kids and the history and, and my, you know, past and, and all of that, um, it's worth it. It's worth it. I can say that. It's totally worth it. Yeah. Um, but you got to start somewhere and you got to be willing to go the distance and you have to have two people who are on the same page. Oh, what was that? Oh, another book. Okay. It's called Attachment. Isn't it called Attachment? Yeah, I can't remember. It's, yeah, it is. It's about... Bring it off to us, Steve. Okay, I think it's called Attachment. I should get my Audible. You know what? That's what I'm going to do for one of my shows. So my show is from 2 to 4, and um, or 2 to 3, because I'm not sure how to fill up two hours yet. I don't know. What time is it? I'm probably already filled it up. They're probably going to kick me out of here pretty soon. <laughs> um, but one of my uh, shows I'd really like to uh, do, do kind of a book. Uh, you know what's imp what books have been completely inspirational yeah. so uh, special they, authors and why and why uh, I can tell you uh, Jen Sincero you're a badass oh, like um, Mel Robbins the high five habit and the and the five the love languages we talked well about the five love languages um, you know for finances kind of a mixture for us of uh, Dave Ramsey and Rich Dad Poor Dad, which is kind of funny, Robert Kiyosaki. Yeah, which is kind of funny because they are two opposite, uh, but somehow we've managed to merge them. <laughs> I think we just took the best from each. Yeah, yeah, they, it, the principles are solid. Well, I got a lot of respect for both those people. I so do I. I really, really do. Yeah. You know? Well, in 2008, uh, Dave Ramsey, you know, saved our butts. Talk about putting yourself out there and making an influence and changing the world. That's that's, right. a, that's a pretty big deal. Both of them. Yeah, yeah. Who else? Uh, Tim Ferriss. Um, uh, God, uh, James Clear. Um, Gary Keller. The One Thing. Uh, Tony Robbins. Eat That Frog. Procrastination, by the way. And I've got to read that again. You get around to it. And then there's a book called <laughs> Shift. I know. I'll get around to it. Oh, you're funny. At first, I didn't catch that. <laughs> I know. You know? <laughs> oh, we should talk about rummy, about cards. No, I'm not. Like we should cards. really talk about cards. We don't, we don't need to talk about cards. Jamie and I like to play rummy, and we're on a we're on a roll. Every night we play a couple hands. You know, as long as we get home in a reasonable time, and. Uh, so we're playing to 10,000. I'm kicking his ass. I'm just saying. <laughs> you got to bring that up. I, re I want to see what kind of response he has. <laughs> Every night he says, are you yeah. ready? Yeah. Yeah. I said, How, you got a Band-Aid? You got a Band-Aid ready? Because he won't kick your butt. He's yeah, going to kick my butt. <laughs> By the way, we're getting close. We're, we're at 8,000 now, and it takes about three months to get to 10,000. <laughs> He's going down. <laughs> uh, the great comeback's on the horizon. I can see it from here. It's, no, oh, yeah. I don't think so. I don't oh, think yeah. so. Anyway, um, I don't know. What time is it, sweetheart? We don't have a clock in here? Oh, guys. 3.29. Mickey Mouse. Says it is 3.29. Holy mech, huh? Okay. You want me to keep going? You like this, Dad? You got to keep going. Let's go. <laughs> I told you, we talk too much. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Yeah, let's get a little break. I want to get some something to drink, and we'll be right back, though. How many minutes? 
give you like six minutes. Six minutes, because I gotta go. <laughs> yeah. And then we're gonna we're gonna re regroup and then sure. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna uh <laughs> huh. What should I do with the live thing here? You keep it going, it's easy. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They'll still see you, but it's all good because we keep our life going the whole time until the show's over. So they're just going to see you guys get up. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, what do you want to talk about next? What do you think is important? Mm -hmm. You can do it. See, we're not on the radio show anymore, but we are still live. You guys got some special stuff extra. We can do it in our show, just so that's what I'm talking to me. I'll talk to you. It's tough. It's, to me, that's a, it is, it's a core of a lot of bad things happen in relationships. It's, it's a victim. The victim is a partner, or taking it out of your partner, and it's a part of something else. You can drop a lot around that. Do you want to go to the restroom? I, I want to grab my soda and truck. Okay. I just need to get back in. I guess I'll let you back in. Okay, we're going to take a little break. And then I'm going to go back uh, live again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I'm going to go ahead and finish, but I'll come back live. Because I don't want dead air. Yeah, you're good.